Hello beautiful people, how's it going? I'm back with another video and before I started today I wanted to say that I'm going to be doing a Q&A next week which is very exciting because I haven't done one in I think four months now and I really wanted to reconnect with all of you so before we get into this new fantastic piece, The Crimes of Grindelwald Theory, I just wanted to ask you guys to leave questions down in the comments below so we can get into a Q&A and I can get all of your questions because I know that it would be better if you guys left them here than on Instagram and Twitter because, realistically, those would just get lost in translation, so... <laughs> beautiful! Whatever. My regular Niffler. Hello beautiful people, how's it going? I'm back with another video. It has been a week since I discussed the crimes of Grindelwald, and so I wanted to come back and bring you guys another theory. And this, honestly, at this point, isn't really a theory, as it is... A hypothesis? I mean, it's something that I just feel like is just really blatantly out there, and I don't think anyone's ever noticed it, and it doesn't really have that much of an effect in the overall arc of Fantastic Beasts, I don't think at least, but it is something really, really kind of um, adorable that I feel like Joe implemented into Crimes of Grindelwald and might be a future reference to Harry Potter films. So I thought it would be an interesting idea to make a video about it. <laughs> so as you all know, Crimes of Grindelwald was received with mixed reviews from all fans. And not just fans of Harry Potter, just fans of films in general, because critics really destroyed it. And um, a lot of the things that the critics said about it was that it felt kind of convoluted, and that we were introduced to a lot of things that just weren't really consolidated, and if they were just things that weren't supposed to be consolidated, they had no purpose to be in the film. And, in my opinion, the biggest thing out of everything that we saw in Crimes of Grindelwald that really felt irrelevant, apart from, you know, giving us a bit of world building, is the inclusion of Bunty, Newt's assistant, in his apartment, which only lasted in the film for about three minutes. And just went away for no apparent reason. I mean, she was just there to introduce us to the Kelpie and the baby Nifflers, and then she was gone. Literally, because Newt went to Paris, and there was no development with her character, which I know clearly is something we're going to delve into piece by piece in the next films, because that's always what Jo does with her characters, which I'm completely fine with. However, from the very first second that I saw her, I mean, obviously I knew that she was going to be in the film before it even came out, because I did a lot of research on Crimes of Grindelwald, but from the moment I saw her, and I just saw the way she talked, and saw the way she interacted, and saw how she was literally just avoided for the rest of the film for no reason, and her impact literally made no impact apart from the fact that she showed that Newt was more desirable because he's, by the way, not just one, not just two, but three women that are into him in this film. I mean, <laughs> that's just not believable at this point. I'm kidding, obviously. I mean, Newt's, uh, great, great guy, I, I assume. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that it just felt a bit off. And so I started to think, out of every single character we were introduced to in this film, we know their full names. Vinda Rosier, Lita Lestrange, all of these names are familiar and we know them. And the one character that we don't know the last name of, and you can actually look at the entire cast list of The Crimes of Grindelwald, the entire cast list, and now officially Creed is too, because we know he's Aurelius Dumbledore, the only character that we don't have a last name to is Bunty. Not even in the ending credits, so I got to thinking. And I know this is gonna sound really strange, because I'm literally just saying that because she's a ginger. I mean... <laughs> I got to thinking, what if Bunty is a Weasley? And I'm not saying she could be Ron's grandmother, or somehow related to Ron Weasley in particular, but I think that she is a Weasley, and the only reason she's put in there is so that later on in the films, we're just like, oh wow, Bunty's a Weasley, JK Rowling is a genius, which she is by the way. Um, I think a couple of weeks ago some of you misunderstood very, very, very much. You guys thought that I was criticizing Joe. No, 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 no. I would never criticize the woman who gave me this empire! The really great thing about the fact that Bunty could be a Weasley is that it would have no large effect on Harry Potter canon, which we now know is something that should not be meddled with whatsoever, even if you are the creator of the entire series, people will be upset. 
and people will have continuity problems and they will not put up with it. And so I think this might actually be a really good direction for a nod to the Harry Potter series by including a person who could be a Weasley, maybe a Weasley, and will not have a huge effect because it's not like she's going to go out and like murder someone. But then again, you really don't know because you really don't know how Joe works in these kinds of situations. And I would like to point out, I'm not 100% sure that we were introduced fully to the ancestry of the Weasleys. There could have been someone who worked as an assistant to Newt's commander in England. In terms of what this could mean for the Fantastic Beasts franchise in the future, I assume not much, but I do think that what this could do is really, really link the Harry Potter world and the Fantastic Beasts world together. We've already gotten Vinda Rosier, Albus Dumbledore, Lita Lestrange, all of these amazing characters. Oh, and Gellert Grindelwald as well. And then Aurelius Dumbledore, but again, we're really not sure about that. <laughs> I think it would be really interesting to see names that we're a bit more heartened to. I mean, Lestrange's and Rosier's are just bad. <laughs> um, I, just, I just feel like Weasley's have a, a closer place in the Wizarding World's heart. And so that would be very exciting. And again, Bunty's character had no effect on Crimes of Grindelwald, and so if there would be any payoff in the future, it would either be to develop her character with Newt, which could be a possibility. I mean, Jo is a great writer. She could very much do that. But then again, if we do find out she's a Weasley, that'd just be something I'd prefer. Um, but then again, I'm one of those fans who just takes anything Joe gives me and I just like sit there with my popcorn and I'm just happy with it and I'm just like yeah <laughs> thinking about this by the way also got me to think a lot about what I would like to see and characters I would like to see from families in future Harry Potter movies and I am telling you actually telling you there is no family I would like to see more in a Fantastic Beast film than the Malfoys you guys have no idea I mean I am a Slytherin I think you guys already knew that by <laughs> all of the videos I've made about Slytherin um, but I just really admire the Malfoy family. I just feel like they're iconic, and I just want to be a part of their, like, just, just royalty. It's just amazing. I really like the Malfoys, and I would like to see a just, like, blonde-haired queen just appear on my screen. Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> Lucius Malfoy is one of my favorite characters in the entire Harry Potter universe, and that's just because he's not only, like, misunderstood, but he's just really haunted by his fear of Voldemort, and that's why he follows Voldemort, and I just feel like that's just like got a lot of depth to it and so that's just something that I would like to see but yeah so I want to hear you guys' opinions how do you guys think Bunty fits into the wizarding world do you think that she's a Weasley do you think that her character was literally just paved into the film for no apparent reason and we lost five minutes of screen time when we could have been focusing on Nagini <laughs> Like, wow. So I want to hear you guys' opinions, and again, if you haven't left a question for the Q&A, you don't really have to, but if you want to be a part of that conversation, you can do that in the comments here. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like and a comment down below, and subscribe to my channel to see a lot more Harry Potter content. Bye, guys! It's amazing, because I used to actually really stutter when I used to say that line at the end, but now I've just gotten used to it. I'm very proud of myself. In fact, I'm very- I'm proud of all of this. Oh, and once again, I really love you guys. You guys are amazing. I love my viewers so much. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. Bah. Ah, bah, 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 bah. Mm. Hello, beautiful people. How's it going? I'm back with another video. <laughs> I can't.